Welcome back. Let's continue by looking at a tab that allows us to bill our claims electronically to a clearinghouse. Let's continue on with this screen by going to the e-billing tab where I can see a number of different e-billing claims here. Now I could have deliberately um, had a large group of claims, some that are set for e-billing, some not, uh, some for paper, etc. But I can click this button right here and it will isolate or find all claims that are marked for batch billing. So I could have done that ahead of time. Or if, if you have a group, let's say a couple of these aren't marked and you want to find them, uh, excuse me, you want to mark them all at once, you can just click this button right here and it will mark the entire batch. We'll reset that and now they're all marked for batch billing. You may also want to do that if you find a group that you previously sent and something went terribly wrong with a clearinghouse and you just wanted to reset 20 or 30 of them at once. You could find that and by clicking this button here it will reset the entire batch uh, so that it's ready to go when you click this button here. So let's talk about those buttons to the right. I could send just a batch for Dora here, uh, not a batch, but rather uh, one claim um, for, looks actually like I'm on Jennifer's records here, but uh, if I were on uh, Dora's there, now it says Dora Tata there, uh, I could send just that claim electronically. Or I could click this button and it will take everyone who is marked with an X. So even if, uh, let me isolate a couple of them or remove them from that group. When I click this button right here, it's first going to perform this function. So even though I only have three right here, it would essentially find everything, regardless of whether I was even on, uh, let's go to a different record, for example, somebody who's not even marked at all. Uh, when I click this button here, it's going to find all those for me. So it really doesn't matter what record or what claim or what invoice you're on. It will find them for you simply by clicking that button. And then it starts that process to send the claims electronically. So try that out and, and see what you think. Um, it will create a print image uh, format for each of those different uh, items. And you'll be able to then um, upload that to your clearinghouse. Now here's how you upload it. First, we're going to set an export path right here with this button. And by default, we have it set to your C drive. If one person is doing this, then that works out just fine. It, it, it can create a folder for you as long as you have what's called the Troy file plugin installed. And we generally do that for you when we set up here form initially. But this is going to go to the C here form claims directory. If you're in the cloud, you can click a button and it will automatically set it to the H claims directory for Amazon cloud hosting. So again, you can click this button, it puts it back there, or you could actually put it on the Z drive or the J driver. If you're in an environment where you have a shared drive with multiple computers, you may prefer that your claims go on a shared drive, especially if more than one of you will be doing claims. So keep in mind that. Notice also that the slashes go a certain way. You can see them on the buttons here. And this path needs to end with a slash. That's important for it to work properly. So that's what this button does here. We can open the claims folder if it already exists and you can see here, okay, here's some previous claims that I've sent. In this case, uh, the C drive here form claims. So this is an example of, uh, of an individual claim that was created, let me slide it over here, that was created for a patient. It's kind of big here the way I have my font set so high, but I think you get the idea. That's the print image format typically converted to the ANSI 837 or 51X51 format by a clearinghouse. So that's how you can open the claims folder if you want. But generally, when you go to upload a claim, you'll navigate to that folder. It will ask you, where are your claims? And you just need to know, just like if you're going to upload a picture to Facebook or something, you need to know where that picture is. Well, in this case, your claims are C, here form, and, um, and the claims folder right there. So that's, that's the path you would navigate to. Once you do that, it typically remembers that location so you don't have to enter it every time. So here I can open the clearinghouse. Let me make this a bit smaller, the clearinghouse page. And in this case, it could be with Optum or MDON, now called Change Healthcare, with Apex EDI, with um, uh, Office Alley. I know I'm forgetting a few others. But um, this particular area here allows you to put in your username and uh, over here your password. Why would you do that? Because uh, let's say this is your um, account name there and your password is, you know, whatever it is, uh, you may not want to have to uh, type that in every time. So if you just click copy, 
then you can paste that right there and paste it down here and then you can copy your password and paste that in now that's probably a little bit long but you get the idea so that's just a little bit easier it's not quite as secure because then someone can see your password but if you're not concerned about that that might work out for you we also have an option in the invoice setup area that says open this this e claims uh, in my browser like Internet Explorer Firefox or Chrome so if you don't want to open it in this window within here form then you can have it open in your browser and perhaps your browser will allow you to save at least the username or maybe even the password so just keep that in mind I'm gonna close that window the final area down here will create a claims folder if you don't have one I already had one but that little button will create a claims folder and uh, that has been created now again if you don't have the necessary plugins I'm not sure if I can get to them from here let's just see um, that Troy file plugin right there is essential for this to work properly so if you don't have that you can go up to the scripts menu number 23 and it should automatically install that for you so if you're not able to create claims or folders or a few other things then you need to install your plugins and perhaps your fonts first the same is true of creating audiograms for what it's worth so I think I've gone over everything in this area. We'll look at the history and CMS 1500 setup area in just a moment.